friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day seven of my 2017 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using this Christmas Dreams stamp set from Lawn Fawn as well as the Hello Winter 6x6 paper pad by Echo Park. I stamped my images with Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some Copic friendly cardstock because I'm going to be coloring with my Copics today. And I'm starting out with a red combination that I haven't used in a while. And it is the R46, R56, and R59. And this combination is going to give me a bit more of a wine red, which I thought would look really good for the bricks on our fireplace. So I'm starting out with that R59, the darkest shade, and just doing a bit of shadow on the bottom right corner of each of those bricks, and then also just around the outer edge of the opening of the fireplace. Next I'm going to come in with my mid-tone, the R56, and I'm going to color right over the R59, kind of soften up that edge, and I'm going to shade in about half of each brick diagonally so that I still have a lot of white space to fill in with my highlight. And for that I'm using my lightest shade, the R46, and I'm actually just going to color over every single brick completely with this shade. I don't often color over my darkest color with my lightest color. Um, sometimes that makes the dark get a little too lost and muddied out, but I found that it really helps these shades here to blend when I did that. So I just went over every single brick completely. I also used those three shades to color in the bows on all of my gifts and the dog bone as well as a few of the bulbs on my Christmas tree. Next I'll be using W3, W5, and W7 and I'm going to start with the W7 and color in the inside of my fireplace. So I'm picturing that it would be kind of all black and sooty inside. So I'm just kind of outlining down towards the bottom um, where the base of the fire is and then a little bit just around the outside edge of the flame. And then I'm blending out with the W5 and then I'll finish off with the W3. I also colored in the stone hearth and the little edge right underneath the mantle with those same three shades. For my dog, I've added in the W9 so that I can make her a black dog because our dog is a black flat-coated retriever that we rescued from our local animal shelter about five years ago and she's an absolute sweetie and we love her to pieces. So I wanted to color this dog to look like our Zadie. So I'm just starting with that W9 and drawing in my shadows and then I'll take my W7 and go right over top of that and just soften them up a bit. I'm shading on the right side, the same as I did for the fireplace, um, since that's kind of the direction where her um, head is facing away from, that seems to make sense to me. So um, next I'll take the W5 and I continue to blend out. I'm just using those three shades on her ears. I want her face and kind of her rump to be a little bit softer in color because they would be towards the fire. So I'm making sure to leave that space for my highlight which will be the W3. And with that I can just make everything really soft and blended. For the browns I'm using E23, E25, and E27. And starting with the E27, I'm just doing a few scribble marks to give that log some wood grain texture and then blending with the other two shades. And I also colored in the trunk of my Christmas tree and the clock with those three shades. I use the E50 to color in my clock face and do a little bit of shading on the dog bone and color in the milk in my glass. And I went back to my E23 and E25 to color in my cookies. And then um, they were looking a little dark, so I just finished them off with the E50 for the highlight, and that softened them up a bit. 
I decided to do a wood mantle, so I'm doing it pretty much how I did the log in the fire, although that was a little bit harder to see since it was smaller. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing now. I'm just doing some little scribble shapes, some lines and some circles, and then a little bit of shading on the bottom two corners, and then blending upward with the E27, and then I'm just going to color right over everything with the E25, so it'll be nice and subtle. For the fire, I'm using Y17, YR16, and YR09, and I'm just going to color the whole thing in with that Y17. And then with the YR16 and the YR09, I'm just going to draw smaller flames within the flame. So it's a flame within a flame within a flame. Um, but I just want them to um, have their own little bit of contrast and not blend too much together. I'll soften the edges by going in the reverse with the YR16 and then the Y17. For my Christmas tree, I'm using G21, G24, and G28. I'm taking the G28 first and I'm just doing a little bit of shadow right under the stand of the star and then right under each um, string of ornaments and then also under each section of the actual tree. So I'm just making um, a little bit of shadow, you know, right where they would naturally fall. And then I'm going to blend all that out with the G24. And I sped this up quite a bit for the sake of the length of the video since this is quite a large image. But I'm just taking my markers and scrubbing the edge of the previous color to kind of get everything to soften and blend nicely. And while I had those markers out, I also colored in one of the gifts and the little heart on one of the stockings. The next color combination I'm using is BO2, BO4, and BO6. And I'm just going to color in the little rug that my dog's going to be sleeping on. Starting with that BO6, I'm going to lay in some shadows because that's going to be behind his body. And then I am blending out with the BO4 and I will finish with the BO2. Now, if the lights were out in the scene that I'm going to be creating, the light from the fire would probably uh, make the back part lighter. It would be backlit but um, I'm going to have the lights on. I'm going to have a fire just for warmth and have the lights on so I can put the shadow towards the front. I'm also using those same three shades to color in the little plate that the cookies are sitting on and some of these little baubles on the tree. And for those, I'm just using the BO2 and the BO6. I'm skipping the BO4 because there's not really enough room for three shades. And then I also colored in one of the gifts that are going under the tree. For my stockings, I wanted to use a red that would stand out in contrast to the bricks. So I'm using R22, R24, and R29. And I'm just adding a bit of shadow on the toe and right under the fold uh, with the R29. And then blending out with the R24 and finishing with the R22. And it's gonna give me a nice, soft, kind of salmon-y red color. I also colored in the third gift, and I thought that those reds were enough of a difference that it was okay for it to have the darker red bow. And then I'm also going to color in a few more of the little baubles on this ornament strand. For my star, I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15. And I'm starting with the Y15, just adding a bit of shadow on the right-hand side, and then a little bit on the top left of that star since it's more dimensional with the five points. And then I'm blending out with the Y13 and finishing with the Y11. I'm also coloring the remainder of my baubles in with just the Y11 and Y13. And then I went over all of that a little bit with the colorless blender just to kind of push that back a bit. I didn't want that yellow to be too bright. To finish off my coloring, I'm taking the Y11 to give a little bit of shadow to the whites of the stocking and the little thought bubble. And then just blending out the thought bubble with the colorless blender again. And a little BG10 for my milk glass. And then I'll just cut these out with the matching dies. 
I die cut my pattern papers with the Lawn Fawn Stitched Rectangle Stackables and the wood grain piece is actually from the Fall is in the Air 6x6 also by Echo Park. And I'm just adhering those down with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. First the background piece which is going to serve as my wallpaper. And then I'll put the wood grain piece down right on top for my floor. Before I get any farther, I just want to add my sentiment. I should have done this when I had the paper uh, still unattached, but I forgot, so I'm going to take care of that now. And I'm just inking up my sentiment with some Lawn Fawn Lobster ink. And it says, May all of your holiday dreams come true, which I think is perfect for this little scene. And while I have my Misty out, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a liner for the inside of my card. And again, I'm using that lobster ink and I'm inking up the Merry Christmas sentiment as well as the little cat and this thought bubble. And then I'll give her the little uh, gift wrapped fish right inside. And then I can begin to assemble my scene by adding my images with some Tombow Mono liquid glue. And I'm starting with the little area rug because I wanted to kind of use that to accentuate the sentiment down there. Um, I also did stamp and color and die cut two additional images that I didn't show on camera. The first being this little candy cane. I just felt like this front area of the card needed another pop of that salmony red to kind of tie that, you know, throughout the whole card front. And the other image that I colored was this little area rug and I just colored it white. I thought it would make a nice tree skirt and just ground that tree a little bit better on the card. So I just am going to add that underneath and then I can put the gifts right in front. And once I have the left and the right of the card taken care of, then I can See exactly where I want to put this fireplace. I wanted it to be kind of centered between them. Um, I didn't care if it was centered exactly on the card. I just wanted it centered kind of between those images. So um, I'm going to add a couple dabs of glue so that I can add my mantle clock up on the top and also my milk and cookies for Santa. I'll also add my little dabs of glue for my stockings. Sometimes I just find it easier to add the glue directly to the card and then lay these tiny little images right over top. To complete the scene, I'm going to add the little uh, thought bubble or dream bubble over the sleeping dog and add the little bone with the ribbon wrapped around it right inside. And now I can just add that liner to the inside of the card with some more liquid glue. And I die cut that with the Lawn Fawn Outside In dies so it has that nice blue border all around the edge and the great stitching detail. To finish things off, I'm going to take my favorite crystal stickles and I'm going to add a bit here and there all over the card. So to the candy cane and all the little ribbons on the gifts and on the bone. And I'm also adding it to the glass of milk and the whites of the stockings. And of course the star on the Christmas tree. And I'm also adding just a tiny little dab to the right edge of each of the little ornaments. And then I'll add a little smidge to the clock face as well. And that is going to complete our card for today. I'm going to lift that up to the light so you can see all that pretty sparkle. I think that adds a super nice touch. I love using glitter on Christmas cards. There's another peek at the inside. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you're interested in seeing more videos like these. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. Here's two extra videos from day seven of the previous two years of holiday card series. Those will tide you over until the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.